All right, fam, I do apologize. It has been a while since I have been active on this channel. I've had a lot of stuff going on, especially here at the Safe Haven Ranch. Now, if you didn't know, there's a lot of weird stuff happening, and I am not a conspiracy theorist, whatever you call them. Do like to prepare myself. Being a Floridian, you have to prepare for hurricanes. It is rather smart to be prepared for power outages, off-grid living, things like that. And if you didn't know, we actually did have an outage of cell phone service and it freaked a lot of people out. I think it was kind of a wake up call. So AT&T had a cell phone outage and it wasn't just AT&T, but it seems AT&T got hit the hardest. If you want a little bit more info on this, I did a dedicated video on it, and I kind of talked about how outages across the country. People noticed their phones weren't sending or receiving messages. I'm lost and my phone's not working. The screen's read SOS. Everybody was panicking, and of course there's people in the comments like, I'm Gen X and, you know, we grew up without phones and without internet. I mean, me, I'm a millennial. I mean, I didn't grow up with a cell phone, and a lot of people kind of missed the whole point of the video the reason why i made the video is to let people know that our generation is a little bit different now like we have our line of defense hooked up to the internet we have our electrical grid our gas our i mean just a lot of different things hooked up to our internet and if there's hackers prc hackers are targeting our critical infrastructure our water treatment plants our electrical grid our oil and natural gas pipelines our transportation systems and the risk that poses to every American requires our attention now. I don't care who you are, you're gonna be affected and you need to be prepared to live off grid. I couldn't help but notice the last time that I was at my local feed store, it seems like they're preparing for the worst because you know what, let's just roll the clip. All right fam, I am at my local feed store. You know, they sell like farming equipment, things like that, guns, ammo. I was actually quite surprised that a lot of their ammo was out in a place that keeps their shelves pretty stocked. If this isn't a sign that they're preparing for something, I mean, we're nowhere near the hurricane season. This is usually what all they have when it comes to generators, like maybe just a couple set up there. But I mean, look at this, just so many generators, gas cans. One of the first things I wanted to get was a generator to prepare. You know, if we have to go off grid for a week, two weeks, however long, very good to have a generator. These are 7,500 watts. That's pretty good. My F-150 has a built-in generator with that. I mean, you could run a couple air conditioners, 30 amp setup. Yeah, this is good. And a lot of these run off of propane too. Before they run out, get yourself a generator. They got some on Amazon too. That's probably where I'm going to get one. I am preparing a list of some stuff to kind of prepare, pass that info to you when I have that all done. Okay, I just looked. There's even more generators in back of the store. These are some smaller ones. This is crazy. I also noticed that there was a shortage and ammo, that's kind of scary. Do we need to get more ammo? I'm not saying to run to the store and buy generators, buy ammo and buy all that good stuff, but it wouldn't hurt. If you do have some extra money and you want to start preparing for some power outages, it's not a bad thing, especially if you live on an ocean close state like Florida, where you have to prepare anyways for big catastrophic storms, not a problem at all. But I did find it rather strange that it wasn't even hurricane season. Technically the winter still. And they got all these generators. I've never seen that before. I even saw like big food preps. Maybe the owner of this particular feed store is kind of preparing. Maybe he's overstocking on some stuff. I don't know. Now here's the thing. I am going to start preparing us here at the Safe Haven Ranch in the event that something catastrophic happens. Because I did have a dream when I was 16 years old. And I always wondered what that dream meant. And I feel like it is coming to life what that dream meant i'm thinking that's probably what my calling is if you want me to share that dream one day let me know i almost feel like it needs its own video because it's that interesting and it's rather scary when it comes to dreams i'm not going to be able to share with you a dream that i had i don't know some 20 years ago because it was about 20 years ago when i had this dream and remember every single detail the way that i've remembered every single detail my doggies they're back to normal. We just had Gracie fixed after she had her puppies because we don't want any more accidents. I'm sure she does miss her puppies. But hey, you know what's cool is all our puppies are really close. I was very picky with who got our puppies, and I think that's great. I wanted to make sure that these guys had the best possible home. 
and we did just that i even had people sign contracts i only had three puppies by the way but they were our babies we were going to keep them here forever at the safe haven ranch it is getting a little dark out but i did want to show you the goats i had some new baby goats in case you missed my previous live stream where i showed my goat and we have a special goat his name is choo choo and he's our favorite goat here at the safe haven ranch pretty soon i am going to move him to this area and you can see we got some more fencing there i actually had to have gracie for two weeks in the house and we had her like kind of closed off because she had just gotten surgery from her you know we, we didn't want her jumping over fences and stuff so she's good now she's good to go it was a little lonely for dak out here for a couple days because we had just found new homes for the puppies look at these little orchard pup orchards. how you guys doing how you doing that's choo choo right there that's my little preemie goat and he just thinks everybody's his mama. Hi, Choo Choo. All right, so this is Louise. This is Thelma. And believe it or not, all these little baby goats, even though they came from two different mamas, they're still technically siblings because they came from the same daddy. That is Billy. And they do this funny thing where they like attack the mom's udder. But yeah, you see, they know their mama. Louise is really good mama. We do have to sometimes feed little Choo Choo because Thelma does that. She's not really good at feeding him, but he's growing really good. I was worried about him. He was born kind of, uh, I mean, you can see how small he is compared to his brother. I mean, Billy's just so much bigger and both of them are males. I think I only got one female out of the four. Look how cute. Yeah, I had him out here just to kind of keep him away from the other animals because our livestock guardian dogs were a little aggressive. Wanted to protect the little baby goats and they were attacking the mamas and we couldn't do that. So we had to make sure that they were separated for a little while, but I think now they're gonna be okay. They were a little weird because of the puppies too. Hi, Thelma. Oh, these are really small goats. They're called Nigerian dwarf goats. And in the case of an end of the world event, these guys being that they just gave birth, will be able to get milk from them. Can't be really picky when it comes to the end of the world and having your own food sources, having some goat milk will be essential to the Safe Haven Ranch. Yo, little Choo Choo is so cute. He's just so cute. He's the friendliest goat here. Hi, buddy. Oh, he wants... <laughs> We're gonna feed him a bottle here in a second. I'm gonna show you how we do that. So who's your favorite goat? Choo Choo, of course. Choo Choo's your favorite? Yeah. Aww. Choo Choo has a bed in the back, though. Oh, he's so tiny. Hey, you know what? We're gonna get some merch that says Ocha Pachucho. Ocha Pachucho. Ocha Pachucho. He's so cute. This is what it feels like to have the paparazzi in the room. I was just thinking that. This is my auntie and cousins. And my other cousin. Hey, Primo. Hey, Primo. That's my Primo. Ocha Pachucho. I wonder if the other babies would drink from the bottle. No? I've already tried. So, what's their names? I know that one's Billy. That one's Billy. I originally called him Toretto because he's like big. But she was like, no, Billy. So what's the other ones, Louise's babies? Lucas and Peyton. Peyton, okay. From One Tree Hill. So these guys are cousins and siblings. Yeah. Hi, baby. Oh, look, it's trying to eat from your dress. I know. Hi. It's always chewing on How are you doing? I love Peyton. Oh. Uh, she uh -oh. her own. She's so soft. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Hey, when we got Thelma and Louise, were they this little? No. No, they were they, they were, were bigger. bigger. Yeah. They're Nigerian dwarf goats, so they stay kind of small. Is that what this is? Yeah. Hmm. They're little small goats. She feeds Billy more than she feeds. Cute. Hey, <laughs> Choo -choo. They're so cute. So, so cute. Choo -choo -choo -choo. so cute. Why are you so mean to your babies? You see what they did to the chair? Where? Look at the chair. It's missing its seat. Oh, did they eat it? Yeah. Well, they just chewed it up. And then oh, so this on. is the chair right here. Yeah. I mean, they were already kind of messed up. We got these on the side of the road. You know what we need to do? We need to lay some tarps down in here and then put well, hay they're down. Never, they're never in here. They only, come, they only come in here at night to sleep. Uh, this is just temporary, but this is one of our storage houses. And it stinks! Did you have a good milk? Did you have a good milk? Oh, he, he, th he thinks the camera's milk. Ah, that's not a booby. He's still hungry. Look, did you see? <laughs> Does Billy want some? Billy doesn't want any of this. Choo Choo's the only one that will drink out of the bottle. 
There's a lot of choo-choo poo-poo. <laughs> oh hey, what God. are they doing? Yeah. Stop that. Oh, that's funny. You guys are like two weeks old. Who taught you that? Daddy taught you that? Well, what's funny is that Peyton does it too. Really? Yeah, it's like they're showing dominance or something. Oh, that's my foot. Stop it. Oh, what do you, what? Wait. Wait. My baby bird. <laughs> Give me this. Look at the moon. Okay, so it's like super late. I be up late. Your boy Omar, kind of a night owl. It's a little creepy out here at nighttime. Beautiful during the day, but at nighttime, you hear noises. You hear the livestock guardian dogs barking. I just heard my geese going crazy too, by the way. Let's go check on them because I think there might be something I'm trying to get to my chickens. A little foggy out tonight. I had this video, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago, where I saw this strange creature outside my paddocks. And I have no idea till this day what that creature was. I mean, I'm leaning towards the idea that it could have been like a big bull, but I'm not 100%. It was definitely creepy, had some beady eyes, and it was big, whatever it was. Could have even been a bear. And that is possible here in Florida. So this is our new fence here. I made like a an addition to my paddocks. You could see that's where my paddocks originally started, but I want to give you know the animals a little more room to graze. My grazers, you know, like my llamas and goats and cows. So this kind of gives them a lot more room. I mean, that's like a I don't know, an extra two acres of grazing field. You can see the dogs. They're already there waiting for me. As soon as they see me with the flashlight, they kind of stop barking. What's going on, guys? You guys barking at some coyotes? Gotta share this cool story with you. So, Gracie, when we got her as a puppy, we got her in Georgia. The owner of her parents was telling us that a coyote had gotten into their paddock like a couple nights before. They're livestock guardians of sheep. That's, you know, Gracie's parents. But the mom, Gracie's mom, killed the coyote. And not only did she kill the coyote, she dug a hole and buried the coyote in the hole. This is the type of savage bloodline I have back here watching the Safe Haven Ranch. That's Gracie, my girl over there. Hi, baby. Hi, Daki boy. Daki, he's so cute. Daki's such a cute boy. I'm gonna check on the ducks and chickens. What's going on? I heard you guys barking. Something about Great Pyrenees breeds is sometimes they will bark all night, even if there's nothing around and they do that to keep things away they want the predators in the neighborhood to know that they're here and that's why they bark if you don't have a big property like i got here and you got some neighbors that don't like dogs well i mean i don't know i think any neighbor would probably not like a barking dog that's just barking all night so yeah i can get annoying really fast mona are they barking at you baby hey, look at all these holes why are you guys digging so many holes cows are okay and there goes tommy they all hang out together. Yeah, that's my male goat. That's little Choo Choo's dad and all the other baby goats. All right, you guys okay out here? Duck, 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 goose. <laughs> all right, chickens are okay. You know, believe it or not, the geese also protect the chickens. Hi, Miss Piggy. Are you itchy? <laughs> Hi, Pepper. You're so dirty. All right, well, these guys look okay. I just wanted to double check on them. I don't see any bears or any beasts in my backyard i need like some night vision yeah i'm thinking about putting some cameras out here and seeing what happens to I me mean, because there's a lot that we probably miss it happens here at nighttime i'm sure maybe some predators have broken in and the dogs maybe they buried them somewhere and i didn't know i mean they a lot of holes out here you know what if there's like a raccoon or coyote buried in one of these holes but yeah i definitely need to get some cameras out here regardless i have to run electricity from here to where those lights are over there. That's like, I don't know, 900 feet, maybe a thousand. Oh, it's a lot, it's a long ways. I'm not saying that it's not doable. We did run water lines all the way from over there to here. And that's how we have water for the animals. Very, very important because it got old really fast carrying buckets of water for these guys. If you do want to prepare with me, 
we could kind of grow together. I'm not a professional. We should definitely be prepared for the worst. We can kind of do that together. And when I say prepared, I don't just mean, you know, having our families and, and being prepared to survive something crazy, but we need to be mentally prepared and we need to be spiritually prepared. And for whoever took that message the wrong way, I'm not apologizing. You need to be spiritually prepared because it's not only physical battle. Ew, ew, oh, ew, Mona. Oh, God. Yeah, um, Mona just went caca. Oh, she just farted. That was rude. I'm going to eat you. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm not going to eat you. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. No, Gracie, don't eat that. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fun journey preparing for whatever happens. Even if something doesn't happen, at least you can say that you're prepared for whatever can happen. If you have any ideas, I am compiling a list together of some survival stuff, and I'm trying to do this on a budget. I'm going to have some great ideas. I already have a list together that's going to help a lot of us, especially in the event of a catastrophe like a hurricane. And I think that's what makes this community so great is we can grow together. We can learn from each other. We can get ideas. I mean, we're so much better as a team. Okay, before I let you go, if you have a dog or a cat or any animals, well, first tell them that we're not going to eat them right now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but for real though, tell them this. Tell them I said hi. And give me a kiss. Gotta go for now before we leave. Give me a kiss. Mwah.